Hey everyone, welcome back to Mash Mash Games. Um, we are at the start of what I'm going to call a narathon, a um, big batch of narrative focused games. Um, because I feel they don't really get enough recognition. Um, so what we're going to do here, we're starting with a game called The Council, which, uh, there you go, thank you. Uh, I picked up uh, on sale the full five, I think, episodes from the PlayStation Store for about nine Australian dollars. Um, seems like quite a good deal. Um, I'm kind of intrigued by... The focus not so much on um, graphical fidelity or indeed for that matter voice acting but the kind of central ideas around psychological development um, and uh, kind of personal interplay and, and political intrigue and stuff like that rather than pure action. France. France. Paris. December the 10th. 1792. Stop! You're not getting anywhere with this von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. <laughs> That's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair of my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling at one of Lord Mortimer's parties, all right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son, didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. Always remain rational and open. I got it. I've opened our shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchard! Von Borchard! Mm -hmm. Listen! Let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. I'm going to trust her because when I played through this once before and when I acted, I ended up with a huge, great big gaping scar across the front of my nose, which, I'm fine, that's okay. But it did just, I found myself gazing into his gaping flesh wound for the rest of the game and it was quite distracting. So I'm going to try this this time. Please, be my guest, Mother. Mm. Ah. 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 Well done, Louis. You reacted perfectly. How do you feel, Mother? 
Couldn't be better. He's alive, so I can question him after we get back. Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm. Means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, Mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No. Even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Come on, let's go home. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borchardt. One month later, January the 20th, 1793. Lord Mortimer's Island off the coast of England. Well done, Mother. You just had to pick up Bob Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer? And now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost mystical object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. Contrary to what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Holm. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh no, we have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Holm, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you, good sir, what brings you here? Lord Mortimer asked me to join him. We have some business to take care of. Oh, how mysterious. You adapt quickly, my son. You get along here like a fish in water. Would you believe that we are all here hoping to solve our personal issues? You'll see. Right. I doubt that you came here to look for your mother, your eminence. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man, because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. Uh, no point lying. That's right. Until now, I've never been invited by Lord Mortimer. You'll see. You won't soon forget it. Given what I've seen so far, I wish I'd been passed over. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. The Cardinal? A duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Are you alright? Okay, it's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah, no one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? 
Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to do. No, Mother, no, don't, don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There is no other way. If you, if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But I trusted you. No, sir. Don't. No. No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay me. You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't Why don't you go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sure, yes. Fine. I definitely have to find Mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find you, Mother. Okay, so now we've got control. Uh, we can run. Oh, we can. E the cash. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess. I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? Uh, okay, so this is where we choose what class we want to be. We can be a diplomat who shines in society, a talented speaker. He avoids faux pas and can convince those with whom he is talking without offending them. Politics is his field of predilection. Or we can be an occultist. The occultist is a master of deception convinced of the importance of knowledge he has acquired extensive expertise in science and the arts using others to achieve his own ends does not bother him okay or we can be the detective what i chose is what i chose last time the detective excels in investigation he is trained to notice every detail of his surroundings as well as people he questions a hands-on man he does not shy away from the direct approach um so these kind of allow us to acquire certain skills and, I, and having been the detective before I think we'll go elsewhere let's do the occultist uh, and we can basically assign our skill points uh, thusly we start with one already in each of the um, occultist tree and we can acquire others in the other fields but just at a slower pace I don't think there's much to be gained from at this stage over leveling the skills with which we start so i'll maybe well look we can we can get one in psychology and we can start with maybe logic i have been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases have you ever heard of the abbey of hexham uh vaguely an ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before hmm. there was a cavern under the abbey wasn't there Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priests called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money, I'm guessing the priests stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Mm, I shall not lie. 
Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please stop torturing me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No. Sorry, I, I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the mama. Opportunities. Your skills allow you to discover hidden details. Select the object that's most suggestive of the situation in order to discover them. Opportunities do not consume effort points to access the skill required for the situation. You just need to have unlocked it. I ask her a question, she answers with another. Is she playing with me? Personality. Each person you meet on the island has their own personality, which makes them vulnerable to certain skills and immune to others. Exploiting their personality is crucial to achieve your personal goals. Skills used against immunities will not succeed and leave you exhausted. Meanwhile, exploited vulnerabilities will give you one effort point back. Review immunities and vulnerabilities in the journal tab in the menu. Immunity revealed, vulnerability revealed. Push the middle button to access your menu pages. Emily, please excuse my insisting, but you still haven't answered about my mother. Do you know her? You'll see, Louis. Everybody here knows Sarah de Richet. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily, but you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. Talents. You obtain talents when carrying out certain actions. Remember to review their unlock conditions and effects as they offer very interesting improvements. Review all talents in the dedicated tab in the menu. Okay, so we have control again. So this is Mortimer's invitation. Dear Monsieur de Richet, I am writing to you to express my embarrassment regarding the situation in which I find myself. As you probably know, I had invited your mother, Sarah de Richet, to join me on my island several weeks ago. We had projects in common regarding your order. Her stay was going smoothly until yesterday, when your mother suddenly disappeared. I do not want to over-worry you, but I would like you to join me as soon as possible, so we can shed some light on this mystery. Please accept, sir, the expression of my highest consideration. Yours sincerely, Lord William Mortimer, Marquis of Westwardshire. Journal, which is where we have uh, the details that we know about people. Sarah de Richet. Sarah Faustine de Richet is a rich French aristocrat. Thirty-four years ago, Sarah took over one of the most important secret societies, the Golden Order. A woman of strong will, Sarah endeavoured to infiltrate the highest circles of society, politics, trade transactions, secrets of state or paranormal spheres. The Order had an eye over everything. One of the biggest areas of growth that Sarah brought to the Order was the development of its branches in America, Europe and Central Africa, not to mention the expansion of her occult section, which she took care of personally. Since he was just a boy, Sarah has been preparing her son Louis to become the new face of the Golden Order. That will be me, Emily Hillsborough, so her immunity is logic. We have yet to discover her vulnerability. Emily Hillsborough is an English duchess close to the English crown. Very discreet about her origins, Emily only came into the political scene after her wedding that some qualified as a marriage of interest to an old English aristocrat on the decline. Libertarian, modern, but discreet, she has taken it upon herself to establish close ties with her peers. In a few years, she has become the favourite diplomat of the Queen, which is what probably prompted her Prime Minister, William Pitt, to take her as private secretary, thus provoking much suspicion and jealousy. As a regular visitor, Emily accepts Sir Gregory Holmes' invitation to come to Lord Mortimer's Island because, for nothing in the world, would she miss one of these famed receptions? This is me, Louis de Richet, the only son of Sarah. Louis Marais de Richet is a young Parisian aristocrat. Ever since he was a young child, Louis moved in his mother's circles, and so it was natural that on his 14th birthday he entered the Golden Order, the secret society headed by Sarah. 
precocious, Louis progressed quickly at her side despite the daily treatment his mother prescribed for his chronic migraines. He climbed the ladder until he was able to assist his mother in occult cases for which he was particularly talented. As time went by, he became shaped in the image that his mother had held for him. Everything pointed to, one day, young Louis becoming the head of the Golden Order. I think it's important to point out that I think the um, the bio changes depending on which skills you picked as your sort of class. Giuseppe Piaggi. His Eminence, the Cardinal Giuseppe Piaggi, is a legate of the Pope Pius VI. A distinguished speaker, Giuseppe Piaggi worked throughout his career to serve the principles of the Roman Catholic Church. A man of science and amateur philosopher, he quickly caught the ear of the Pope, who discreetly named him Cardinal Inpectore. He was thus able to use this relationship of trust to help Pius VI in his difficult mission of guiding the faithful. Invited by Sir Gregory Holm, Piaggi is delighted to meet his old friend Mortimer in order to represent the interests of the Holy See. So, onwards then. Um, I do find that we often... Royal Jelly. Royal Jelly restores two effort points. You cannot carry more than five. Press the down button. Must be an impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you, we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. What can you tell me about the disappearance of my mother? Two weeks have passed since Sir's mother went missing. All the staff here have since been busy searching every nook and cranny of the island. But Sir may rest assured, we shouldn't be long in finding her. And just what have you found so far? It would seem that Sir's mother may be hiding on the island and regularly changing her location. But no one seems to know why she would find this behavior necessary. What do you mean? On several occasions, we have found leftovers of food, a few of her things, or even traces of campsites. The reason why we are searching the wharf again is because lights were spotted there last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, None of the guests seem to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps Sir's mother was here. Skills. Your skills give you access to unique choices and actions at the cost of effort points. The higher your skill level, the lower the cost in effort points. Browse your skills by using the character tab in the menu. Uh, so we can't ask this because we don't have questioning. Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll in the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Uh, we do have manipulation, so we can select this. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but sir, please. And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. Here you are. It is indeed your handkerchief, Mother. You must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? Okay, so we've... 
uh, discovered that the servants are vulnerable to manipulation. All Mortimer's servants wear a mask. It is the recurring subject of conversation among the guests. No one knows the true reason. Well, presumably you've got to assume that it's kind of him, don't you? Pretending not to be him. There's something not right about this floorboard. It's different from the rest. Somebody replaced it recently, but it looks like it's fixed pretty solidly in place. It's going to be tough to rip it out of here. Um. Mm. Ah, shit. Ah, it's not coming up. I'll never manage it barehanded. I need something to lever it with. Okay, we have to find something that we can use. <laughs> ah, cool. Looks like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean, and the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contrary, I put my money on cannon powder. Well, obviously we can take the bar. This might just come in handy. Do you think? Let's see what's hidden inside. Dude, they're not hidden. Let's look. To Mr. Galbraith. The address is 50 Bedford Square, London. Very telling. Master Carl Corey. It's too badly written, I, I can't make out the address. Envelope with an ideogram on it. Hmm. A letter written in an oriental language. Oh, we don't have linguistics. I have the slightest idea what it says. <laughs> My skill set's proving pretty useless so far. The address is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me, it's about time the order sent some envoys there. Dr. Samuel Ritter Dauchois. Samuel Ritter Dauchois. <laughs> Mother, you test me even when you're not here. It's an anagram of Louis Moras de Riche. You wanted to write to me then. Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richer. What is your game here, Mother? What are these strange turns of phrase? I've never heard you speak like that. What's going on here? That you write to me under a pen name. Okay. But here you go even further by trying to avoid raising any suspicions should anyone else read it. I wonder if this Godoy is the person you came looking for. Think. Godoy, Godoy. Manuel Godoy. Why does the name sound so familiar? I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. It is Eminence Giovanni Angelico Brasci. This envelope is meant for the Vatican. Apparently this letter is meant for Pope Pius VI, born Giovanni Brasci. I wonder which one of these people is influential enough to write to the Pope in person. Seriously? Uh, H.B. de la Bart. An address in Cairo, Egypt. Mortimer communicates with the whole world, apparently.
That does it. Let's see what's hidden inside. There's a book and also a bag. The Mysterium Cosmographicum. I know that book well. Mother used to read passages from it to me all the time. And judging from what I can see, it's the same one as hers. For crying out loud, what's happened to you, Mother? Manuscripts. Manuscripts allow you to educate yourself during the adventure. At the start of each quest, you can choose what to read and gain permanent skill points. Find your manuscripts by using the inventory tab of the menu. Let's look inside the bag. A little food, a few toiletries, a small key, and some kind of black powder. An iron key completely rusted. You never know. It might be useful. I hope Mother wasn't counting on it. <laughs> some fruit, a piece of bacon, and some bread. The fruit's still firm. The bread's a bit stale. From the smell, this food's been here roughly two days. And if it's rationed, there's enough left to last two more days. Shit. Those are definitely my mother's things. Recognize her hairpins. This bag smells of her perfume. A piece of soap. Some oils and her powder puff. What does all this mean? The bottom of the bag is covered in black powder. I think we um will leave the bag. Right, that's enough. I think I better leave her bag here. If she hid all this. It's because she thought she might need it later. For crying out loud. Why did you hide supplies in the middle of nowhere, Mother? I don't know what's going on here, but you obviously feel like you're in danger. Let's use the key. Locked. I'll never get it open barehanded. Seriously? Okay. Ah, there we are. I should also point out that this game is a wild uh, festival of uh, achievements and uh, trophies, which is quite good fun, but you won't see them pop so often in this chapter because I've been through here before. This looks like a pistol case, but it's empty. I don't know if this has anything to do with you, Mother, but if it does, at least now you're armed. Just like in my vision. And none of it's telling me anything useful. more jelly they're pushing it on me like crazy hmm this wharf is used as storage for a lot of barrels aha uh -huh. what do we hear it's cannon powder hmm the powder's wet not surprising given the dampness of the dock it's unusable now I don't know what the person who left this barrel like this had in mind but it's a waste so let's go through this my mother's been hiding pieces of bread between the rotten boards of the wharf in the middle of the night. Amber fragments. You just found an amber fragment. Each time you pick up four of them, you increase your maximum effort points by one. Amber. Oh, I interrupted myself as well. <laughs> Sorry. I think we have everything that we um, can pick up here. Latin inscription. An nesis, mi fili quantilia produncia mundus orgatur. You don't know, my son, how little wisdom the world is governed with. I tend to agree. Lord Mortimer has an immunity. Conviction. Interesting. How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? I don't think he did it himself.
Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sada Dedice, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Confrontations. During a confrontation, you have to go through several steps while being as persuasive as possible. Confrontations have consequences on the rest of the story, so don't hesitate to use your skills. Each confrontation displays an interface showing you how much the person you are talking to is convinced. Thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Uh, I think honesty here. Certainly, your eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, your eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, uh, if you only knew, my son. I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certainly. You said you work together. What do you do exactly? Uh, confidential members of the Golden Lord. I think we can we can be uh, discreet. If you know my mother, you will understand that I cannot answer you, Your Eminence. I'm sorry, but do not worry, my son. I perfectly understand, and I expected nothing less from you. Discretion and secrecy are both pillars of the organizations for which we work. You are the worthy son of Sarah. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Ah, uh, I hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Well, obviously. Pretend I don't want it. There's... Mm. I'll give it to her if I find her. Mm. Listen, you have nothing to fear. I will give your letter to my mother the moment I find her. The moment you find her? You mean Sarah has gone missing? Shit, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Let's not exaggerate your imminence. I have no other information at this time. It's probably nothing. Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother would read it? Confrontation last step. For the last step of a confrontation, you must convince the person you are talking to by giving a positive answer. If you give a bad answer, the step will repeat itself until either you give a right one or you have no blunders left. The last step of a confrontation will repeat itself if you fail. Uh, I don't believe in God. Okay. I swear by the almighty God to honor the promise that no one but my mother shall cast her gaze upon your letter. Good. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Duce. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priest's safe passage across the borders. 
Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Hidden elements. Many clues and items are hidden. Some of them will have an impact on your adventure, so do not hesitate to look for them. Uh, there's a good part of this game that's kind of art history lesson. Blind Oedipus. Blinded himself. What a tragic destiny. Devil's Thorn. Devil's Thorn grants you the exalted state. You temporarily see the immunities and vulnerabilities affecting a dialogue choice in a conversation. You cannot carry more than five. Press the right button to use it. Devil's Thorn. Fall of the Damned by Rubens. The man who cannot achieve the salvation of God the Father is offered to fall into the depths of the abyss. It's a crazy painting for sure. Saturn devouring his son. Good God, how awful. Everything in this painting is disturbing. It's the first time I've seen brushstrokes like this. Crucifixion of St. Peter. He was crucified upside down out of humility. Surprising for an entrance hall. Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch. A biography of the great men. Opened Brutus's page. Caesar, stabbed by multiple blows at once, sees Brutus raise the dagger on him. Then, covering his head with his robe, he delivers himself to the arms of the conspirators. Nice family. Let's keep it. Might come in handy someday. <laughs> I just helped myself to this guy's library. Why not? I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi. He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simple. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Maurras de Richer, it is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Riche's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. 
Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richer, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Um... Mm, again, honesty. Lord Mortimer asked me to drop everything and come find my mother, who seems to have disappeared during her stay here. Ah. Oh. I took the first boat, and here I am. I'm so sorry. Don't be, sir. It's not your fault. Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. Good lord. Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening, my friend. Holy shit. That's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apology. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. Do you know that man? Sir Gregory Holm, an English aristocrat. Very influential. He's also close to Lord Mortimer. So don't be surprised if he acts like he's at home. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh, we shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. Um, well, I listened to Washington last time, so we'll go with... My vision is more important. Let's follow home. I'll follow you, sir. Mr. Washington, I hope to speak with you at greater length on another occasion. Emily, please excuse me, but I would like to speak to Sir Holm. I shall see you later. My friend, I hope our dear Giovanni is well. Ah, the troubles in France have fatigued him, but he will recover slowly. Do not fear. He apologizes for remaining in Rome. The voyage was too much for him. And right he was too. The mildness of the Mediterranean, eh? Come, sit down and have something to eat, my friend. You look rather pale. Excuse me, sir. I have been neglecting my duty. I haven't introduced myself. Sir Gregory Holm, an old friend of Lord Mortimer's. A real pleasure, sir. You who must be well used to the court of France. How do you find this peaceful little haven? Charming, if I hadn't come here for disturbing reasons. Yes, I heard the news. What a story. Indeed. I wanted to ask you. Would you have any information about the disappearance of my mother? Ah, uh, very little, I'm afraid, my young friend. Your mother came at the invitation of Lord Mortimer. Then, one fine day, we couldn't find her anywhere. That's it? As I said, I don't know very much. Lord Mortimer had the entire area searched immediately. We found no clue as to her disappearance. But I am convinced that as soon as Lord Mortimer becomes available, he will explain the situation. Thank you for your answers, Sir Holm. But I beg your pardon. I get the impression I know you. Have we met? Except in my dreams, of course. You. Not that I remember, young man. Uh, perhaps you are mistaking me for another member of the Chamber of Lords. Uh, what with the wig and the powder, it wouldn't be the first time. No. You were definitely the one I saw threatening my mother. I thought... never mind. It'll come back to me. Would you allow me one last question, sir? I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, please, go ahead. Um, what do you want to know? Um, so generally with these questions, you 
it's not like m most sort of open world stuff where you can just like ask them all in sequence. You generally only get an opportunity to ask one, so um, we'll have to make it count. Anyone else missing? Link between Hillsborough and my mum. What did my mother come here for? Who would have had a grudge? Let's. Do you know the reason for my mother's presence here? I haven't the slightest idea. No. She was invited by Lord Mortimer. But you don't know why? Not really. I was given to understand that your mother was looking for something. And do you know how long my mother and Lord Mortimer have known each other? Several years, I believe. They seem to know each other for quite a while. But it was the first time that Lord Mortimer had invited her to join us here. Good. And finally, would it be possible for me to speak with Lord Mortimer this evening? I'm terribly sorry, no. He really is quite unavailable. But please rest assured that everyone is doing their best to find your mother. All the same, it's not the Chateau de Versailles. It can't be that difficult to find her. Worry not, my son. I am persuaded that we shall find the famous Sara de Riche. No doubt with new adventures to share, huh? <laughs> no! Elizabeth! I should have insisted that you rest in your room. Do you want me to call someone? Let me handle this. I'm used to this kind of thing. Miss, can can you hear me? Leave me. Uh, notice something is strange. <laughs> it's just a dizzy spell. Don't worry. You'll be all right. Her heart rate is already becoming more stable. Wow. Poor girl's had her hands tattooed. I've seen these pinnacles before in old occult books from the end of the 12th century. I don't know what that young woman's trying to protect herself from, but she definitely takes it seriously. I'm so sorry, I... Can you tell me something about her? Who is this young lady? Elizabeth Adams. She's come to the island for a course of treatment, to rest. For a course of treatment? That's right. The seer can do wonders. Are you all right, Elizabeth? Do you feel any better? When did she arrive? Uh, four days ago. Okay. My mother had already gone missing. Are you all right, Elizabeth? You gave us quite a fright. Take it easy, miss. Let me... I just need to get back to my room. Of course, my dear. Go ahead. You saw it, didn't you? Pardon me? He sang it de la bestia. Sorry, your eminence. I don't speak Italian. Ah, forget it. It doesn't matter. Sign of the beast. Gentlemen, it's getting late. It is time for everyone to go to bed. It has been a long day. It's all the more delicate. I'll see what I can do, but the case I'm on at the moment might well leave me with very few opportunities. Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> <laughs> You seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. The statue is impressive, and so are the paintings. Rubens, the Caravage, Gagnereau. Lord Mortimer has very good taste, and the means to express it. Oh, I see our young sir is a connoisseur. Yes, in my spare time. Yet, I couldn't tell you who the artist of that painting there is. I think I recognize a theme, but the style intrigues me. Saturn devouring his son. Oh, well, you wouldn't know. The artist is none other than Lord Mortimer. 
I thought for a long time that the painting wasn't finished, but my old friend assured me it was. Still, there's no accounting for taste. Not very conventional, but it sure does hold your attention. You'll find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. Sir Holm, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Just mentioning Elizabeth totally changed Washington's attitude. Looks like he just saw a ghost. Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your rooms. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, your eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? Let's have a look at um, Washington George. George Washington is the founding father and first president of the United States of America. Washington shared his life between military and political success. Very early on, he was introduced by Sarah de Richet into the upper class of an influential secret society from France, the Golden Order. He later took the helm of the American branch. Tired of politics, he wanted to retire to his property in Virginia, but that was without taking into account Lord Mortimer, who encouraged him to come out of retirement. On the advice of his friend, he ran for a second term and was successful. Invited by Mortimer to his island, Washington likes to attend such social gatherings incognito. Doesn't really look very incognito to me. Uh, Elizabeth Adams. Elizabeth Adams is the daughter of John Adams, the Vice President of the United States. Elizabeth was rejected by her parents at birth and was declared stillborn. Brought up in isolation, she grew into a frail young woman with bipolar disorder devoured by her terrible fits of anxiety. Her deepest secrets were slowly gnawing away at her from inside. Despite numerous treatments, nothing could cure her. The young woman continued to descend into folly. As a friend of Sir Gregory Holm and of Lord Mortimer, John Adams decided to send his daughter to Lord Mortimer's manor in the hope that he could help her. With little hope, Elizabeth has now been at the manor for a short while. Like four days and the understanding that sea air might help her. Sir Gregory Holm. Sir Gregory Holm, Baron of Nottingham, is a very influential British aristocrat. Confirmed royalist, Sir Gregory Holm spent his career extending the influence of the United Kingdom throughout the world. From the flourishing East India Company to the Spanish trading posts in America, he stamped his hallmark on key decisions made by the world's pre-eminent economic power. In England, he contributed to the reduction of the national debt and, being very attached to family values, he invested time in the working class, creating charity schools in order to offer a decent education to the, quote, future links in the next industrial revolution, end quote. A network builder, Holm always finds pleasure in attending the social gatherings of his old friend, Lord Mortimer. Golden Elixir. Golden Elixir cures all your negative alterations, you cannot carry more than five. Golden Elixir. President George Washington. Well, that kind of defeats the object of traveling incognito to have both your name and your official title on your doorknob. Huh, that's me.
Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Piaggi's trust. What should I do? Open the letter without breaking the seal. Let's do that. So, it really is a list of French countrymen. Piaggi wasn't lying. Wow, nice room. Mortimer sure doesn't do things halfway. Carmelite water. Carmelite water gives you the focused state. Your next skill use will cost you no effort. You cannot carry more than five. Saint Jerome and the Angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. Saturn devouring his son. Again? I saw the same theme in the hall. I wouldn't like to be his son. The conversion of Saint Paul by Caravaggio. It's incredible. It doesn't look like a copy, but I was sure the original was in Rome. Saint Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before superior voices. It always amuses me to see how art gets used for propaganda purposes. Oh, look at me, comfy, comfy pajamas. All right, so there's the end of episode one. It will tell you all the things that we passed, uh, the alternative um, options that we didn't take, and uh, any of the little implications and moments where we failed. I suppose they were like the little, um, the little quick time events, that kind of thing. Uh, how about we do two of these, and we do two of these. Equipping manuscripts. Here you can choose what to read during the adventure. Each manuscript you read confers a skill point at the end of the quest. Let's do conviction for now. So there's chapter one. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, join us next time, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs>